Now let's take a look at an ethernet frame and what an ethernet frame consists of. So as this is being put onto the line and sent out, it's going to create this ethernet frame uh, to go out to the next destination. So let's take a look at the separate components of this. So let's take a look at the payload first. The payload is what data is, is going to be transferred. So the payload has uh, data from the upper layers. So layer three, four, five, six, and seven uh, is going to be within here. So even the uh, packet um, from layer three, that header is going to be included in there. The segment uh, header is going to be in there. So the payload is all of the data that it's trying to get from one point to the next point. All right, so here we have an ethernet frame. The ethernet frame exists everywhere from the header all the way back down, back to the trailer. So we call this the layer two ethernet frame. The layer two ethernet frame can be anywhere from 64 bytes to 1,522 bytes. And so we're gonna be talking about how that looks a little bit later on. But for now, just know that we've got the payload within here. We've got a destination MAC address, a source MAC address, a tag, a type, and a trailer. So we end with a trailer. This front part right here is the header, and the header is everything that's needed for this frame to be delivered to its destination, versus the trailer has some information to check to make sure that the frame arrives uh, at the other end successfully. And so let's uh, dive into each one of these components here. So there you have it. We have the ethernet frame right here that's being sent across. And then right before it's put onto the wire, we actually add a couple more things to this. And we call that the ethernet packet, the layer one ethernet packet. And it can be anywhere from 72 bytes to 1,530 bytes. So within this ethernet frame header, we have both the destination MAC address and the source MAC address, both being six octets long. And an example of that we saw in a prior uh, slide. So we've got the destination and source MAC address. The destination MAC address is needed so that way when it sends out, that switch is going to know where to forward that information on to the next place so that way it can get to its destination. So the destination MAC address is so it can get actually to that destination. The source MAC address is needed for a couple reasons. Number one is that switch needs to learn what devices are and what ports those devices are on. So it uses that source MAC address information to learn where different devices are on the network. The other thing is once it gets to its destination, the end machine is going to need to know how to form a reply. And so that information right there is allows the end machine to know who's communicating to, to it and how it's going to form a reply to that other machine. The tag you can see is grayed out. It is four octets long and it's grayed out because it's optional. Uh, you will see this on networks that have VLAN set up so that way it can determine which traffic is associated with which segment. And so that is what the tag comes in. We call that a 802.1Q tagging on there. We'll talk more about tagging later on. It's not something you necessarily need to know right away, uh, but know that there are some networks that will have that tagging involved in it. Probably not something like your home network, um, but it does exist out there. Then we have the type length. I've got it labeled on here as the type, but it also could be the length. It actually could represent two different things on here. So if it represents the length, it represents the length that is being sent across so that the devices and the switches know what length is being sent across and know how to deal with it. But if it is the type that's being sent across, then it knows what the payload is. So it could represent both things. If it is the type, if it's representing what the payload is and, and a symbol of what the payload is, then we have to have some sort of gap at the end here, some sort of trailer to signify the end of this frame um, as it goes through these different devices. Then we have the frame check sequence. The frame check sequence 
is a trailer at the end. And so what happens is this information within here is then goes through some sort of encoding that happens. And then when it gets to the other side, it double checks that encoding to make sure that the information was unaltered. This is a check to make sure that, you know, this is physical stuff is happening along the way. We're transmitting data through trying to manipulate elements and it doesn't always get it right. And so when we send this information through, there's that extra little check that happens to just as a, hey, did it get to me in the proper form? And it goes through and does this frame check sequence to ensure that the frame is accurate and it got to the end device fully intact. The preamble is gonna start off this communication. It is seven octets long. So let's say uh, we're sending something off of, uh, along a copper wire and we send a signal across it. And it's hard to determine, is this a signal that says one, zero, one, zero? Or is this a signal that's saying a one, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero? So there's some sort of timing in which this data comes across. And it can be a little difficult to transmit this timing from one location to a next. So what, what a preamble does is it alternates a signal by sending a one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. It sets that across to the other side uh, so that way it synchronizes the clock between two different devices. And so now it can determine the rest of the frame of how it's timed out and determine what is a one and a zero along the way without getting confused. And so uh, it just synchronizes the timing between two different devices. Then we have the start frame delimiter. The start frame delimiter is one octet long. This is a signal to signal that the preamble is done and we are about ready to communicate the rest of the frame. And so it does this by sending a one zero one zero one zero one one. And then that one one signals, all right, we're off the timing piece, we're now synced up, now comes the rest of the frame. Okay, then we come to the end of the frame and what happens at the end of the frame? Well, it kind of depends on the protocol, but either at the end of the frame, we just stop communication and that's the signal that, hey, we're done communicating, or perhaps there's some sort of signaling at the end of this that stops and says, hey, I'm finalized, I have no more com to communicate. Um, what does happen at the end here is there's some sort of gap. So before a NIC card can then transmit the next frame and send the next frame out, it has to wait a period of time. And that period of time would be the equivalent of 12 octets before it can send the next frame out. So that is known as the intrapacket gap. Now, one of the problems is that if a device were to just be allowed to send any size of frame that it wanted to, it could capitalize on the hardware on the other side and overwhelm the hardware on the other side. So we have to set some sort of limits. That's what an MTU is for. MTU is the maximum transmission unit. So within like a layer two ethernet frame, the maximum transmission unit by default is 1,522 octets. And this allows for a payload total of 1,500. Of course, we have the 22 extra octets because of what comes in the header and trailer there. So that is the maximum transmission unit is how big our frame can be as it gets sent out. And once again, the standard is 1,522, although there are some uh, abilities to change that, um, although you have to change it on all of your equipment. Uh, so most of the time, most of our networks, we just use the standard and that's the maximum transmission unit the max amount of, uh, that we can actually transmit.
Now, if you're like me, you like to see what the nuts and bolts look like, what the actual detail looks like. So I outlined here below, if you were to map this out with ones and zeros, what exactly would it look like? So you can see what seven octets look like, what one octet looks like, what a MAC address actually looks like. When you, when you convert it to ones and zeros, this is what the representative would be. And the payload that I have right here is actually the minimum payload that we have within this frame. So uh, you can see the ones and zeros. This would be the actual signal that gets put onto the line. Hope these videos are helping you out. If they are, can you help me out by hitting that like button?